This video is all about how to quarantine a puppy and what to do after quarantine. If you have a puppy that has parvo or some other infectious, contagious issue going on, you're going to find this video to be very helpful. If you have a new puppy and you're dealing with a challenge or you're getting yourself prepared, or if you're a dog breeder, a new dog breeder who's uh, attempting to put all the puzzle pieces together and make sure you do the right things by your dog, you'll find value in this video. Guess who just got the test that says you are now able to be out of quarantine? Woohoo! Guess what happens next? You two are going to get a bath and a little bit of a grooming perhaps. And then you get to be in the playpen downstairs. Oh my goodness, how exciting. You get out of quarantine right now. I'm Sean Kent Hayashi. Among many other things in my life, I happen to be a dog breeder and I thoroughly enjoy training beloved family pets. So I breed miniature and toy schnauzers and we train them so that when they go into a new home, they are thriving and ready to go. My story about Parvo is a completely unexpected experience in my life. After many, many, many years of having dogs and taking great care of dogs, I ended up uh, purchasing two puppies from another breeder who came to my home, unfortunately, with an unexpected virus. And so we had to deal with that. It has been a very painful experience. We've learned a lot from the experience. And my intention in my video is to share with you our experience, the wisdom we've collected as a result of living through this and uh, what you can do to um, improve your situation based on our learning. These are the discharge instructions that were given with our puppies when they were coming out of the veterinarian's office, having recovered from Parvo, but still needing to be in quarantine for at least two weeks. Even after a puppy has had Parvo and is looking like they're doing really great, they can still be shedding the live Parvo virus for some say up to several weeks. I saw some research that said up to 40 days. It's that period where the puppy is looking great, bubbly, fun, ready to play, but still shedding virus that they have to stay in quarantine. Otherwise, we're causing a bigger problem for ourselves in the future, for future puppies, for other dogs in the community. So quarantine. It's not a great time, but it's a very important one. So what makes a good place, a, a, a quarantine space that's fantastic for your puppy? It needs to be a place that will keep your puppy so well contained that the virus will not spread. A good quarantine environment will also keep your sick dog from being exposed to other issues that could affect its immune system while it's currently compromised. Uh, the other piece is that a good quarantine environment is going to be one that's easy for you to keep clean while your dog is still shedding virus or throwing up whatever the issue is that's causing you to need to quarantine your dog. So you want a space that's super clean. Let's dive in a little bit further. You will want to have a space that you can keep at 72 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer so that your puppy stays warm while in quarantine. And here's a list of tools or items that you'll want to make sure you have right at hand for when you are interacting with a puppy who is in quarantine. First, I would consider that you get food grade gloves to put on your own hands. These would be latex free, powder free. 
and put them on before entering the quarantine space and then have a trash can that you can put them into immediately as you come out of the quarantine space. Also, you'll need to deal with your shoes, your foot area. So one of the ways that I did that was to have uh, shoes that I would wear up to the point of where I was stepping into quarantine and I would spray those shoes really, really good with Effersan before I stepped out of them and into the quarantine space. I'd step over the gate into the quarantine space with bare feet and then I would wash my bare feet really good with Effersan or bleach water or something like that as I was coming out of the quarantine space. I highly recommend a window, a vent, some sort of way to get fresh air and an air purifier nearby as well, since you will be using cleaning products that have chlorine in them. Bleach, Effersan, Wizzy Wash, all of these have chlorine in them and that's what's enabling you to kill the parvovirus. But make sure whatever the virus is that you're dealing with. If you're dealing with Giardia, you're going to need a slightly different type of cleaner, one that is specific for Giardia. So bleach doesn't work as effectively against Giardia, but bleach does work effectively against Parvo. With Giardia, I would use Effersan and then in outdoor areas, Wizzy Wash. I wanna point out that a good quarantine place has ventilation. So in this case, I have a window, I have a fan, that is kept going all the time. You can hear it at the moment. I usually turn it off when I'm videoing, but I left it on just so you could hear it. And then I also have air purifiers set to the like germ clean infection level. And I have multiple ones of these different brands and such throughout my house to keep the air quality really good. When going into your quarantine area, you're either going to want to have some disposable clothes or you're going to want to have clothes that you're only wearing in that environment and then you're washing them on the sanitized cycle, ideally with an Effersan tablet in the wash to make sure that none of your clothes are um, holding on to or containing the virus. If you're wearing cotton clothes, I would highly recommend that you get rid of them when you have um, interacted with the puppy. The cotton clothing or the organic clothing holds on to virus and such. It can be very hard to get the uh, viruses out of certain materials. So be very careful about that. Veterinarians recommended to me that we literally burn every bit of clothing that uh, would have come in contact with the parvo virus. So I found other alternatives to burning my clothes, but uh, some of them I did decide to let go of just because it was probably time for them to go anyway. Also for your quarantine area, you're going to want either disposable food and water bowls, or you're going to want bowls that can be put into a dishwasher on the sanitized cycle and cleaned with bleach or whizzy wash, some sort of uh, product that is known to kill the virus that you're dealing with. You're also going to want disposable potty pads or something that enables you to remove the dog feces and throw up in a sanitized way. So I used a variety of things myself. I used the washable potty pads that were then immediately washed in the sanitized cycle in my washing machine. And I also used Clorox wipes to pick up anything that need to be picked up. So gloves on my hands, Clorox wipes picking up the poop or cleaning up the um, throw up, whatever I'm dealing with. And so again, multiple layers here to make sure we're not moving virus from one location to another. Clorox bleach wipes. Oh my goodness, I went through loads of those. And then also Effersan in the spray bottle. I'll put links to these products below in the show notes. But uh, I ended up getting three of the Effersan spray bottles. And with any kind of bleach product, you want to make sure that you are keeping it in a dark environment. 
you do not want to um, use it after a certain period of time, meaning the Efferson tablets in the spray bottle will last about seven days and that's it, then you need to get rid of it. So we have a habit now where every Sunday we're changing out the Efferson spray bottles. The same is true I've, I've learned of bleach products. They break down if they are in light. So you want to store them in the dark, bring them out when you need to use them. You may also want additional puppy gates. And what I mean by that is we used two gates on one door so that we made sure there was buffer space between the doors. So we were using our master bathroom as our quarantine area, as you'll see in the videos that I'll be showing. And then also you'll uh, potentially want another gate that corn cordons off that area so there's space between. Hopefully this is making sense. So like I step out of the master bathroom over the gate and now I have another space where I make sure I am sanitizing and cleaning everything that just came out of. And so then I had another gate on the bedroom door where other dogs in my home couldn't get into that space. Perhaps the biggest takeaway that I hope you get from this video is please don't take your dog out of quarantine until you have gotten a test from the fecal sample from your dog that tells you your dog is no longer spreading the virus. So if you have a dog that has parvo, for example, you'll want to take a fecal sample somewhere starting perhaps around 14 days in quarantine and have it tested by your vet's office. Even if that's not your vet's protocol, even if your vet just says, hey, after 14 days, you can let your dog out, I would not do that. I would have them check because if your dog is like one of those that has the, the live virus for up to 40 days, you may have just caused a problem in your neighborhood, your yard, or with future dogs in your home. After you get a negative snap test, in other words, now you know your dog is no longer carrying the virus. Now the work begins with sanitizing that area where your dog has been in quarantine. And I'll show you what we did to sanitize the area where our dog was in quarantine. What a relief to be on the other side of quarantine. But I wanted to show you here what it looks like as I am, as we are cleaning this space. So there have been two gates here that helped create a separation between this space and this space. And then we also put another gate out in front of the door. And every item, every surface has been sprayed already with the Effersan product. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the Effersan product, which you've heard me talk about now many times on my channel, is wonderful for helping to get rid of viruses and other issues. But here we go. So I've already done this with everything. I'll just do it again with the water bottle here so that you can see what it looks like. But I'm literally spraying every surface, everything in this room right here was actually already sprayed yesterday. And now I'm coming back again with a bucket of, there's bleach in there. And in just a few minutes, I'm gonna be adding hot water and we are going to be covering again every surface. We will do this multiple times over the next um, few weeks, just as we continue to be very cautious. This has been sprayed down with Effersan numerous times allowed to dry. Now, clearly the first time, Efferson is a very good product. The first time I'm sure it's doing its job. I'm just being um, extremely precautious, making sure that every uh, virus has been gotten. But again, wanted to show you every surface in this room, including the towels, have been either washed in Efferson or washed in bleach. Got very hot water and a bunch of bleach in there. And I'm using a microfiber mop. It's important that you use microfiber cleaning um, with, here you go, this kind of microfiber, not cotton, when you're cleaning with chlorine, bleach, Efferson, any of these products that do the job. The other thing is having some, uh, 
gloves. So these gloves are fantastic for helping to make sure that I can clean and then throw away what needs to be gotten rid of. This rag has lots of bleachy water on it and I have literally just wiped down every product that is or was in this quarantine space and I'm hand doing this at least once maybe even twice and anything that I can't get really good with the bleachy water I'm doing with the Effersan. I also wanted to show you in here I've got every product that was in the bathroom in some way including the gate and everything sprayed it will also be washed multiple times with the bleachy water and then it will be rinsed profusely before it's put back in an environment where puppies would be able to um, interact with it. So again, just showing you what it looks like, multiple levels of this. This is just me being a little crazy, I'm sure, but I'm going to make sure we get rid of this uh, virus from our home. And uh, I'm grateful for all these products that help to do that. Bleach, Effersan, Wizzy Wash. When you're cleaning, don't forget no, uh, door handles, doors themselves. Notice like we have a pocket door here and we regularly use it when we're uh, containing the puppies in one area while cleaning the other area. So again, this whole door has been cleaned. The doors here have been cleaned. But it's not just here in this room, meaning it's all of this, all of the door frames, all of the area here, even the baseboards are being cleaned. This thing has been uh, sprayed down several times and uh, will be put away for over 30 days. But all of these areas in here ble being bleached, this is uh, doorknob handles, doors, just wiping it all down. This is the gate that we put here to prevent any of our, our puppies from being able to get back close to the dogs that were in quarantine. So we had multiple levels of um, distance to make sure, but the, the parvovirus is transmitted um, from either uh, poop or throw up. So we didn't necessarily need to do that, but wanted to do that as extra uh, caution. And then all of this area. Hi, Grace. Hi, Grace. How are you, sweetie pie? All of this area, again, has already been cleaned a couple of times, but uh, we're not really at risk at this moment. We're not at risk now. It's just making sure we get this virus out of our house so that for future puppies, we don't have to be so concerned. And when I say for future puppies so that we don't have to be concerned, what I mean is, oh, we will definitely have our protocols in our house, but I don't want to be in a situation where I'm worried that my house itself has parvovirus in it. So that's why uh, things like this crate and the bedding in it and every toy in the house sprayed down with Eversan, potentially sprayed with bleach, cleaned multiple times. If an area is not sanitized, the parvovirus can live on surfaces for a very long time. I saw mixed data in the research that I read, and oh my goodness, I've read probably 20, 30 hours of research uh, over the course of the last month. And what I've learned is that the parvovirus can live at minimum seven months, but in areas like concrete or grassy yards that are untreated, parvovirus can live for up to nine years. This is why sometimes you'll hear about people who say that they bought a new home and then they got a new puppy. They let the puppy out in the backyard and all of a sudden the puppy got parvovirus. Well, why? Because someone in that house had had parvovirus before and they didn't keep their dog in quarantine long enough and they didn't do things to disinfect or sanitize the area. And this is why I'm so adamant puppies that have not had their shots need to be in a safe space. I have another video that I've done on 
uh, how to identify parvo, uh, what to do when you're first hearing the word parvo, how to protect your dog from it. I'll put that video up here. If you haven't watched that video, please do. So I want to underscore something here about what I learned from my own parvo research. I read um, scientific papers. I read things from Cornell Vet Medicine and from several other very well-respected veterinary organizations. And I can tell you that there are mixed um, bits of information out there about this. So the American Kennel Club has on their website, for example, puppies with parvo continue to shed the virus for up to 10 days after clinical recovery. So of course, when is clinical recovery exactly? Well, um, they say be sure to keep any puppies recovering from parvo away from unvaccinated and potentially vaccinated dogs. I would say also be careful about having dogs in an environment that has a lot of organic material in it. For example, your backyard or your front yard or a park, any of those places. Don't take your dog until you've gotten that negative uh, test that shows no, no more live virus. Um, so conscientious dog owners need to be aware and conscientious breeders need to make sure that we're educating the people who are getting our puppies about the risks and how to avoid the risks, which is what that video that I referenced a moment ago also focuses on, is how to avoid getting yourself in a situation where you are hearing the word parvo from your vet. My puppies who had parvo have fully recovered. They are doing great and they can go on to lead very healthy, normal lives. I was told by multiple veterinarians in this process that there will be no issues for them as they grow up and that they can do all the things any other normal puppy, dog, etc., would do. It is so fulfilling knowing that these little guys have made it through Parvo, these two little ones, and now they are oh, back so able to be integrated into our family and integrated with the rest of the pack and they are playing and having a great time. Full of energy. Full of energy, so happy. They're back to their bubbly selves. It's really wonderful. And so this little girl is tea time. And Jim, one of your favorite times of the day is tea time on old, right? Yes, that's right. That's why we named her that. But I also like tea. I like drinking tea. And one of my favorite times of the day is when I sit down to have my cup of tea. So tea time felt like a special name for both Jim and for me. And Jim? But yes. you're, ready, you're getting ready to go have a tea time. Yes, I am. Which course are you playing today? I'm playing old today. Oh, so there you go. Her name is so appropriate. Tea time on old. Jim is going to have a great day. Enjoy your golf. Thank you. Babies. And these little ones will enjoy playing yes. nonstop, I'm sure.